So I hand over now to uh, Marco and Yair, who will present uh, a joint presentation from all of the academic committee. Good morning, everyone. Welcome again to the academic track at State of the Map. So happy to see you here. It's not always easy after a social event, so thanks again for coming. So my name is Marco Minghini, and uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the academic track scientific committee, which is also composed by Jair Greenberger, Peter Mune, and uh, Godwin Yeboa, and also Levente Ewald, who unfortunately could not be here, uh, but we send him our greetings. So um, just before uh, starting, I would just uh, like to, to, to say that both last year in Milan and also this year over the past few weeks, we got a lot of emails and uh, people asking whether the academic track talks are open to all conference participants. Of course, the answer is yes, and it's even more than yes. I mean, you are all very, very welcome to stay here to listen to the academic track and please participate in the track. So, ask questions, approach the speakers, even question what the speakers are saying, because this is exactly the purpose of the track. And in this very spirit, the first talk actually is given from us, and uh, it will be about an exploration of the interactions between the academic community and the academic research on OSM and the whole community. Just before diving into this, uh, just uh, a brief introduction of the academic track. As you might know, this is the second edition of the track after the first and very successful one we had in Milan um, last year. This year you will see 20 contributions. Uh, we accepted 20, you will see 18 of them presented as uh, oral talks. We will have 13 regular talks like this one and uh, five lightning talks. Again, lightning talks will be in this room just after this session, so please uh, stay here. And we will have six posters later on today uh, in the poster session. Uh, the sum is not 20, it's 24, because some of the posters are also presented as lightning talks. Okay, um, so we are particularly happy of the uh, quality of the talks and posters, but also of the variety of them. So if you decide to stay here today, you will listen to uh, talks coming from authors uh, working in different disciplines. Um, and particularly, we will also have a talk given by a company, just to uh, show the... Uh, the width of uh, research uh, topics and research disciplines involved in OSM, and also many, many different topics. So you will listen to talks about the quality of the data, about the contribution patterns, but um, most important, uh, applications of OSM with outcomes, results, relevant for the whole community. This is our uh, schedule. Uh, just some numbers to compare the submissions and the accepted submissions of last year and this year. You can see from the table on the right that the situation is overall quite similar, but I would like just to draw your attention on a couple of numbers. Uh, first is 45% over there, which is the percentage of abstracts co-authored uh, by people from more than one country, which is a lot because it means uh, half, uh, almost half of the abstracts. And also 12 people are, uh, look at the uh, bottom line, 12 people contributed an accepted abstract both last year and this year, which tells us that the research community is actually active. It's stable, it's mature, it's very diverse, uh, geographically speaking, but also diverse in terms of disciplines, in terms of topics, and still developing. Currently, how does the integration with the OSM community happen? Let's say officially through the academic track, but also through this OSM science mailing list, uh, I'm not sure if you are all aware of this. This is a mailing list active since January 2017 and especially created and dedicated to scientific uh, applications and discussions about OpenStreetMap. Of course, it's open to everyone. But it's clear that interactions also happen in many other ways and channels, uh, mostly because many OSM scientists like me, like us, are also uh, OSM mappers and contributors and users. So this is exactly the reason of our talk. So we will try to uh, explore the dimension of these interactions and uh, the effects that it has uh, on both the scientific and the non-scientific community. And I will pass the microphone to Yair for the details of this work. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Marco. I'm, I'm very happy to see all of you. And as Marco gave a talk in the action, this is bit of a study about science, about how science in the context of OpenStreetMap is carried. So it is framed with, our, with a general understanding of science uh, that switched from the idea of having a very objective researcher which is non-participant 
into ideas that talk about researchers acting within paradigms, within a set of values, and that research uh, evolves and science evolves through interactions. And uh, Latour studied that uh, looking at labs, but it's true for every type of science. Um, people, researchers, interact with each other, interact with their uh, subject of study, and by that they may uh, get affected or may adopt different conceptualizations of their ob object of study. And OpenStreetMap is uh, open to many different kinds of interactions, like this conference, like mapping, like just using the data. And our, what drives us in this research is the idea that the engagement with the OpenStreetMap community probably affects the kind of research that is being carried. And that's what this talk is about. Uh, so we're, first of all, we're trying to understand what kind of engagements are there? How they are related to the way researchers conceptualize the OpenStreetMap? And how that, those two things, engagement and conceptualizations, affect the actual research that happens? And also, we'll try, we'll try to finish with a, maybe a more normative or not necessarily uh, an academic contribution, but thinking about how can we bridge the map according to the uh, um, the mode of, of this conference. How can, what can we do to make OSM research better integrated into the OSM community and vice versa? Um, so how did we do that? What, what's this uh, uh, study is based on? Well, mostly about a review of literature of publications from the last uh, uh, four years, basically, 2016 to 2019. Uh, we used Google Scholar uh, to find uh, publications with OpenStreetMap or OSM in their title. Uh, that resulted in 181 uh, publications. Uh, this talk is based on 136 of those. Eight were removed because they were not in English or uh, not about our OSM, about different OSM. Um, and some of them, frankly, we still haven't had the chance to explore. So 136 is still a nice number. We also collected uh, auto-reflections, self-reflections, like we wrote to ourselves, how did you come to uh, study OSM? Uh, how do we think of OSM? What were our interactions? And we also interviewed some researchers that relate to OSM or use OSM in the, in the research. Uh, and try to, to understand how do they understand OpenStreetMap and what's the history of their interactions and how do they view the future of both research about OpenStreetMap and OpenStreetMap himself. So this talk would mainly focus on the first part, the paper review, um, with some initial insights from the latter one. So the first qu research question we had is how does open research the research community engages with OpenStreetMap. And uh, what we did was read the papers, basically, look at things like the abstract, the conclusions, the method, even the acknowledgments, and try to find any evidence of engagement with the community. And 60% of the papers had shown no sign of engagement. Um, but the other categories, uh, and I'll go briefly through them, so we have acknowledgement, so basically just acknowledging the help uh, and the advice of, of people from the community. That's the, in terms of engagement, the most frequent one. We have uh, uh, occasional development, so that's like in the conclusion section, someone saying, oh, the results of this study could be used to help the OpenStreetMap community or help the data quality and so on. So that's the second most frequent. Then we have actually studies of the community, indirect, meaning studying the traces of, of uh, the community of mappers. So uh, analyzing uh, the history of, of, uh, of the data. We also have, which is becoming less and less frequent uh, uh, as we go down, um, direct study, meaning actually engaging with mappers and asking them about their procedures. Um, and the, 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 the categories that are least frequent are papers that were written in an attempt to contribute to the community uh, explicitly. And so that's contribution and meaningful development. So in contrast with occasional development, people actually talking, 
specific procedures for integrating the results back into the community. So it's like uh, in hindsight, but still some kind of willingness and thought about engagement. The second thing we want to know is how does this engagement relates to the kind of views that the papers express about open street map, about the conceptualizations. So in this graph, uh, I hope you can see the colors well enough. Um, the thicker the line, the more papers that were belonging to the same two categories. So the categories we used for, um, for conceptualizations, first of all, OSM as a data source, I think that's uh, uh, self-explanatory. Data produced by contributors, so that's saying OSM is a data source, but there are people behind it, and kind of finishing with that, so it's still very data-centric. Um, then we have uh, contributors producing data, so that's already switching to more weight on the mappers themselves. A collaborative project based on contributors, so talking more about the project. Talking about community, either a unified one, so the entire body of mappers, or a community of community, that's a diverse community. And finally, a social product, a set of procedures or pra uh, practices that create the data and create the project and actually affect the mappers. And what we can see here, first of all, that the data-centric view is the most dominant, and it's the one that is related to the no engagement. So we already see a relation here people that do not engage with the community, or at least no, don't show signs of engaging, are also the ones that tend to use OpenStreetMap as a data source. But when we go into more direct contact, or even indirect, object of study, uh, indirect object of study direct contribution, we can see that the weight, the thickness of the line become, of, of data-centric views becomes thinner and thinner, and ideas like social product, like a, a diverse community becomes uh, more, more uh, gets more weight, basically. So there are already evidence that engagement leads to more complex notions of the community and of the project. Um, but what did people actually research? So that's a word cloud based on the titles re after removing uh, stop words. Uh, and decapitalizing everything. So we can see that data is very centric, and above it, quality, uh, using, so using OpenStreetMap 4. So you can see the dominance of still that idea of OpenStreetMap as a data source. We can see a lot about land uses, so building, urban, uh, um, land, road, up, above quality. And that's, um, that's also related to uh, many land use, land uh, cover, classification uh, uh, papers that look at the data. But evidence for thinking about the mappers themselves are not as strongly uh, evident here. So you can see, if you see quality land routing, and then you have like communities and volunteered in, in small, small, uh, smaller uh, print. So you can see that the notion of, 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 uh, of studying the community is still not getting much weight. Um, and we ask ourselves, how does that relate to uh, the engagement levels and to the kind of conceptualizations? And it's clear to see that, oh, application, meaning, okay, meaning, uh, 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 meaning uh, uh, that uh, using OSM4, and data quality research, the data-centric kind of uh, 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 approaches are very much related to uh, um, the no engagement and to the data-centric views. But once you go into more engagement and uh, more looking, more, more uh, and thinking more about the, uh, the people behind it, uh, the kind of uh, uh, approaches uh, that we use are, um, are the, uh, the kind of uh, uh, research that we use are more uh, looking into contributing to the community uh, and so on. Um, I'll have to skip uh, quickly through stuff, so uh, I'm, I apologize. Um, so we started to think of where can we enhance the engagement, where can we see gaps. So looking at the author's disciplines, 
according to their uh, affiliations in the paper, we can see that uh, engagement is more evident in the more social fields, mainly geography, but also social sciences, with the exceptions of computer science and geoinformation, which are basically more technical fields, but show more diverse uh, means of engagement and of, uh, 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 and of and more diverse conceptualizations. But when we turn to look at the journals uh, disciplines, what we can see, and I'm sorry I'm not hanging too much about the, uh, the graphs because I'm short on time, uh, um, is that it seems that the journals, the, the, the publication outlets, enforce some kind of homogeneity. So computer science that was very diverse becomes more oriented towards the data and geography becomes more oriented towards the social product. Um, I'll skip quickly through those. And we also try to understand the geographical relations. And we uh, classified each paper according to the um, overlap between the author's origin and the study areas they used. So one means they, use, they study the same area they live in, uh, zero that they studied um, another area, 0.66 it means uh, uh, it, some, all, all study areas had authors coming from them, but some authors weren't from the study areas. And 0.33 means that uh, um, some study areas had authors coming from them, but not all study areas. So a bit away from home. And what we can see that um, in the perspective area at least, um, well, in both cases, Either people study close to, to home or away right from home. That's the most popular thing. But the data-centric view is much more uh, uh, dominant closer to home, okay? So it kind of gives us the, 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 the insight that people that think of areas that are away from, from, from their home encounter more stuff and develop a more uh, complex uh, idea about uh, uh, OpenStreetMap. Um, so, we tried to uh, get into uh, um, engagement via uh, the interviews and uh, to, to establish some kind of causality and through the interviews and personal reflections. And what we can see, well, thirdly, engagement affects the complexity. When people talked about it, they acknowledged that. And we could see three tracks, uh, an OSM academic, someone that's reading or that's engaging with OpenStreetMap but doesn't become a mapper which shows kind of the more basic uh, uh, um, understanding or academic that becomes a, a mapper that has a developing understanding and a mapper that becomes an academic, uh, which is kind of logical but doesn't have to be in way. The first community that you contact within OpenStreetMap greatly affects how you interact with the community and you're really next to share your research. Um, there's the issue of how much being a mapper affects me being a researcher and vice versa, and that's mostly seems to be unconscious. And, well, it seems that people that are least engaged are the ones that are more willing to discuss uh, the basic assumptions and, and data structures of OpenStreetMap. Uh, so, I'll, we saw some meaningful relations. So I think we can say safely that the way we interact with the community affects the way we do research. And maybe even that our engagement affects our ability to look beyond the OSM data structure. Um, where can we improve that? Uh, that was the last question. So we need to work outside our conference zone, both in terms of stepping outside our discipline and going away, not using our area, going to areas that we don't understand. We need to raise an awareness to the complexity within technical fields and we need to increase communication with the mapping community and get their views on that, which is, would be a follow-up research. And this is how we're gonna Yeah, we'll just now. briefly close this presentation with the um, outcomes that we have for this year's academic track in addition to the talks and to the posters. Uh, first outcome is the proceedings. You may be aware that we um, collected all together the accepted abstract, we packed them into a single volume and we published it some days ago. It's uh, openly accessible to everyone under CC BY, so from this QR code or directly from the academic track page on the conference website. 
Also, I'm happy to announce that we will have a special issue uh, on uh, high-ranked scientific journals. Still, we need to decide the journal. Uh, probably this decision will be taken in a couple of weeks after the conference. What is sure is that the title will be OpenStreetMap as a multidisciplinary nexus, perspectives, practices, and procedures, and it will be open to everyone. Uh, so not just to the authors who are presenting their talks today. Um, in the very spirit of OSM, we will have an open access special issue. We are kind of negotiating now with journals the best possible uh, conditions in terms of article processing uh, uh, fees, because if you are academic, you know very well that publishing under open access uh, often means you, you have to pay. Uh, so just uh, as a final invitation for all of you, get registered to the OSM Science mailing list. Help us to keep this mailing list active, share your doubts share your questions, but also not just there, but also in other, uh, in other channels and uh, in other lists, of course, because again, we are uh, academics, but we are all part of one single community and we all need each other. So finally, I would like just to thank uh, people from the State of the Map Working Group, especially Christine and Michael, but also people, all people from Heidelberg, uh, especially Martin, uh, that was uh, really, really supporting together with the local, uh, the State of the Map uh, Group. They were really, really supporting the academic track and uh, allow us to be here and to run this very successful track. Finally, again, thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Marco. We're just going to allow one question, and that will bring us to start the next session at 9.30 and allow the room change. So, first person to put their hand up that I can see, Patricia. You have a, uh, you have a... Out of the 10 interviews, how many of those were women? Of the 10 qualitative interviews that you did with the, the qualitative perspectives, how many of them were women? Um, there's a bias. Uh, there's a bias. <laughs> um, there were, uh, let me think about it, um, there were at least two out of, out of the ten, uh, at least two out of the ten. Um, I, I'm running the names right now in my mind, but I, I, uh, I, I don't remember uh, exactly. Um, but it's, it's a bias that reflects the bias within the research community. So, uh, yeah. Re women researchers are harder to come by. But if you want uh, to, to contribute, you'll <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, if there's one quick question there when the room is empty. Okay, so uh, I'll thank the speakers on behalf of myself. We have a question up there. Thanks. Um, it looked like you were, you were looking at specific phrases that people used, which made me wonder if, it, if some of those phrases came from citations. Um, and it also suggested when you looked at the journals that people were using similar language. I wondered if you can use that to identify whether people are all citing in a certain direction. And then you can choose people who may be nodes that you could actually speak with and say, hey, you're, you're influential in the community. Is that something that you, you've thought about? Um. Well, no, uh, frankly, thanks for the suggestion. Um, I, would, I would suspect that if you look back at reference networks, or citation networks, it would lead firstly to good chat, <laughs> yeah, um, and to some of the people in the scientific community, in the scientific committee. Um, yeah, but I, I think um, it, could, it could be an interesting addition, and, uh, and that's something we can look at. Thank you for the suggestion. So as a follow-up to that question, um, governments are looking at alternative ways of leveraging data, open data, to support policy work. A lot of that is in the direction of open, open data, open government. And um, my question is, uh, have you considered any linkages through, through the format of citizen science? We're seeing some of that. Citizen science, for example, the Great Lakes Basin, the government put out a proposal to look at ways of you leveraging citizen science to help them ground truth the data that they're collecting and analyzing through machine learning. Um, well, what, 
thanks for the question. Uh, um, so, so what, what you're asking is basically about another set of actors that are related here, and that's, that's uh, uh, government or public agencies that, that try to uh, uh, use the data and have, have an interest in the data. And at the moment, we're, they're certainly part of the system or triangle or maybe even more than that. At the moment, we're focusing on, 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 on the research avenue and, and the origins of that. And actually, that didn't come up too much in the, uh, in the interviews. Um, there were some mentioning of industry, um, of working for public organizations or industry. Um, but we're not considering that explicitly because we're trying to look at, first of all, at those two communities. And as long as, as we don't see any very uh, uh, impactful connection about that, that, that affects conceptualization, that affects engagement, uh, we'll stay there. But that's certainly something that we need to follow up with.